our coders, in this Python challenge, we're going to be solving this Sudoku puzzle. So here it is, write a Python function to solve a Sudoku. So I'll remind you how Sudoku looks like. So we need to fill a nine by nine grid with numbers so that each row and each column will contain all numbers from one to nine. And the condition must be true for this three by three block of cells as well. So usually we start with the partially filled grid and we need to fill the gaps so that it will be complete. So this is how the solved Sudoku looks like and effectively there is only one solution. In other words, a unique combination of numbers that satisfy the constraints. And this is how we're gonna pass uh, the puzzle into the function. So where the empty cell is in the Sudoku puzzle, we're gonna have zero. So this is a two deal list. And what we need to do, we need to swap those zeros for numbers that satisfy the constraints of standard Sudoku puzzle. You can pause the video here and try to solve it yourself. Otherwise, stay tuned and I'll show you one of the solutions. All right, so let's get on with the solution. This is going to be some sort of depth for search with backtracking. I'll be using VS Code, and first of all, I want to import product from Eater Tools. It computes the Cartesian product of input iterables, which is effectively equivalent to nested for loops. Okay, and after we finish with the input, we can start writing our function. First of all, we'll use this iterator to, well, iterate through all possible combinations of rows and columns. So effectively, we evaluate each position and we try to define whether it contains zero. In other words, is it an empty cell in which we can record some value to solve this puzzle or not? If it is, then we can slide into the for loop where we will be assigning this position a value between one to nine until we won't get the right number. After that, we need to check whether this number already exists in the same row or in the same column, because remember that every row and column can contain only one instance of a number from one to nine. And if everything is okay with this condition, we check the same rule for a three by three box. If both conditions are satisfied, then it must be a legit number for this particular position and we can place it there. Next, we call this a function recursively, but with the renewed grid. So it takes into account the number that we already used to fill in the gap in the puzzle. And pay attention to this relatively new operator called the assignment expression that assigns values to variables as part of a larger expression. Also, uh, it goes by the name uh, Vorus operator. Well, if our function was able to find a solution at this point, it will just return the solution. But if it got stuck and it has to effectively backtrack, then we declare the position equal to zero. And thus the loop will be able to carry on from the point when we found a last viable solution. However, if there will be no possible solution found at this level, then it will return false and we would have to backtrack to the level above. And finally, when the solution was found, the function returns the completed puzzle, which is effectively a to do list. But of course, here we go an extra mile and we write another function that uh, will print the solution to the screen. All right, so that was one of the possible solutions. Please write in the comment if you know some more. That was V. Please give this video emperor's thumbs up, toll the bell and subscribe. Bye for now.